Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video we are tracking Invest 94L and 95L, which one will become Nadine first if any. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Friday, October 9th, 18th, 2024. The black arrow is Invest 94L. Purple arrows invest 95L, and both still have a chance for developing into Tropical Storm Nadine. And if they don't, they are bringing some squally weather to the Caribbean islands and Central America. Here's our vorticity signatures of both storms. 94L obviously has been more circular this entire time, uh, and has been close at times to becoming a tropical system, and it's looking at right now on satellite image it as best as it's ever looked since it came off the coast of africa and then of course 95l is still very broad in nature and it's taking time to consolidate all that vorticity into one closed system so here is the latest satellite image of 95 94l i should say and you can see how it's got that nice outflow look it's got deep thunderstorm convection at the moment uh, but we're not quite there yet with a closed system be to become a tropical storm. But like I said, it's looked better than this, not since it first came off the coast of Africa almost a week ago. It still has a 20% chance of developing over the next two and seven days as it continues moving westward towards the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and Cuba. Here's the spaghetti track guidance models and the model intensity guidance. Here's the close-up view of 95L, and you can see it's got two broad areas of uh, convection, one to the north of the low pressure system and one to the south. Still has to consolidate all that into one closed system to become a named tropical storm, but it's closer to doing that than they, uh, 94L at the moment, it's got a higher chance at 70% versus 20% over the next two and seven days. So we're going to look at the GFS model uh, frame by frame to see if any of these systems do develop. Black will be 94L, purple will be 95L, and this is the 850 cyclonic vorticity, so it's the spin and energy of the atmosphere 5,000 feet up. So if we look at the upper levels of the atmosphere, the reason why these storms are not going to be heading into the Gulf of Mexico, so don't have to worry about that, is because we have a subtropical jet uh, traversing the Gulf. So that's going to cause a lot of wind shear and put a big wall pretty much up in the atmosphere saying, nope, you are not entering. And here is that wind shear environment, all that red across the Gulf of Mexico. But where our two storms are located, we have that light blue section. So light wind shear for uh, continuing uh, chance for development. And here is the moisture content, not as uh, and, uh, huge as it was a couple of days ago when I made a video on Wednesday for 95L, but still a lot more compared to 94L, which is a very compact storm. So then 24 hours from now on Saturday, October 19th, 94L will be just north of the Dominican Republic and east of the Turks and Caicos, not developed on the GFS model. We do have a good chance for 95L just before landfall with the Yucatan Peninsula and uh, Belize uh, to see a potential tropical storm form from 95L. As you can see, the vorticity is quite tight and intense before landfall. Uh, so a, a quick tropical storm is possible before it does get over land and then will not be able to develop any further at that point. As you can see here, it'll be moving into southern Mexico by the time we get to two days from now on Sunday, October 20th. 94L will be on the outflow side of 95L as it works its way inland across Mexico and Central America. And that's going to start increasing its wind shear, as you can see here. And that's going to evaporate all that thunderstorm convection that it's building right now as it hits that wall of dry air as it tries to 
go towards the Gulf of Mexico and is going to get stalled out. So then we move ahead five days from now to Wednesday, October 23rd, and 95L has made its way into the eastern Pacific Basin, where it could develop into a tropical storm but continue moving away from land, so we shouldn't have to worry about the storm at that point. And then we have our potential uh, subtropical low trying to develop. As you see, uh, previously we had a big uh, broad area of circulation of vorticity earlier. That moved south into more tropical waters. Uh, so we still have this circulation, but it's broad in nature, trying to develop. It doesn't have an upper level ridge, but it is going to be on the right side of this upper level trough, which acts the same way allows the upper level air to expand away from the storm, allowing the storm air to converge at the lower levels, creating that low pressure system. And it's just a matter of will it have a little bit of wind shear to maintain thunderstorm convection, but as you saw, too much wind shear is causing dry air to infiltrate, and it's gonna be associated with a cold front and warm front. So right now, this is not showing signs of development. And then by the time we get to day seven, next Friday, October 25th, it is between two nor'easter-like storms. Uh, so it's possible if it can consolidate that vorticity bundle into a warm core system, we could see a subtropical storm form. And uh, if it stays away from these two uh, frontal boundaries, if not, it's just gonna continue moving with those storms out to sea and just hopefully uh, ships can steer clear of it. Now, if we look at the European model, it's a little bit different. We see it's a little, we 94L and 95L have much tighter vorticities. 94L is very compact and then actually moves to the north with that subtropical system and potentially that's where we could see it develop there if it doesn't while down in the Caribbean. And then 95L also develops just before making landfall with Belize. Uh, it takes more of a southern route, whereas GFS takes a little bit more of a northern route, but still goes into the eastern Pacific basin and then away from land, so we shouldn't have to worry about that storm after it crosses Central America. Here's the ensemble models showing where our storms could go over the next seven days. And in terms of rainfall, we're talking a good dose of rain down in Belize, the Yucatan, Mexico, Guatemala, anywhere in those purple regions, we're talking two to six inches. And if you're in the yellow regions, upwards of a foot or more. So 94L has maybe the next 24, at best 48 hours before it gets torn apart by some wind shear before developing. 95L has less than 24 hours before it makes landfall somewhere near Belize or the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico before it makes landfall, and then its next chance for development would be in the Eastern Pacific Basin. Next name on the list would be Nadine, so it's a race to see if either of these will develop. If both do, Oscar and Nadine would be the next names on the list. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. I'd like to give a shout out to Mia and Special K for donating five and fifty dollars to my video on Wednesday. So thank you very much. And if you would like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew and like detail with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.